Seth, yes, it's looking sir. good. Yes, sir. Thank you. So, um, just I sometimes take for granted the things we do as a team, but I think folks appreciate the little details we do. One of them is, is you know, my guys, you didn't have to do any concrete chipping, did you? It makes my life so much easier. <laughs> it's a lot, and it's always dug down to the depth that I need. Well, I see it's pretty deep. The pipe is really deep, and then I noticed the little detail of you. Um, what do you call that when you put the sand I call around? It shading, it? shading the pipe. Shading it. It keeps it real stable, doesn't it? Yes, sir. And I think that's just. It looks really good. And you know, one of the things that came to mind was I noticed that you ran another vent, and we hadn't framed this wall yet, but we're going to have to frame a wall to get it in and yes, remove sir. the header. Yes, sir. And uh, we had talked about maybe that this would be vented, but you decided to run another vent here anyway. It changed direction more than 45 degrees, and uh, so I wanted it to before it hit a vent. So I wanted to make sure that it bends properly. Does so that have um, something to do with the amount of joints and things that are yes in there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what, and is, then, what is your kind of rule of thumb on that? Well, if it changes direction more than 45 degrees. Oh, okay. And on this particular angle, it's not exactly a 45. Right. And so in order to make the perfect angle to catch this, I had to add those fittings and do some rolling. And so I actually brought it up uh, above, flood, up above the vent level as well. I see. So when I rolled down like that, it makes it, it turns into an S-trap and it's an illegal venting. So I added the vent here. In yeah, because you start going higher then it's the air can't get out of that. Out exactly. of that. Okay, great. Exactly. That makes perfect sense. If you start changing the elevation, then there's not enough air in the top of that to exactly. carry the vent to the existing vent, which is right here. Yes, sir. And then now we're going to go ahead and vent up through here. It's not that much more work. We're going to go through the wall. And then we can still tie it into the existing I'll just roof revent without right? having to touch the roof. In we'll the just attic. just revent in the attic and everything will work fine. It doesn't always work that way, but it worked out good here. Well, that's great. I appreciate those details. Yes, and uh, we'll pour the concrete back too. Good. <laughs> You're glad you don't do that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You didn't I don't want to like do that? Mixing. No, sir. I don't like mixing. <laughs> well, I think it's good for us that we do it because plumbers should be doing plumbing and get to more of our projects. That's right. And I know that that's working out for you too. It is. Well, thank you, Seth. And, sure. and I appreciate all that you do here. And, and I also know that you were going to go ahead and delete these copper. Yes, sir. That had to be relocated because we're changing this right here from a tub. This was a tub and we're changing it to a shower now. And what was your thinking on just deleting all of this? Um, it's easier now above slab. There's always slab leak, not always slab leaks, but it's always a risk that that old copper inside the slab is touching metal. It's going to cause a slab leak. You know, in five years, you don't want to tear up all your new work. Right now we have everything open. We have access to everything. It's not always the case, but in this case, I can grab on to where they begin the other side and take it all above slab and just eliminate everything. Well, I, I really appreciated when you, when you told me that you were going to do that and I think that made a lot of sense and you know Good. just being thorough quality minded like that certainly is a long term fix. Now coming over here a little bit, normally we don't drill too close to the edge of the stud so tell us what you're going to do to make sure that no sheetrock gets driven in there. Just stud guards is code. Stud and guards. Tell us, tell everybody what a stud a guard stud is. Guard, just a piece of metal that prevents the sheetrocker from hitting it, right. from hitting the piping. Right. When you have a two by four wall, this one's essentially a two by six. When you have a two by four wall and you have pipes, waste pipes and water pipes in the same one, you always, you have to fight for room, so. Mm -hmm. And so that's the way acceptable method is to put something over that. Now, a lot of people don't, you know, plumbers don't do that. They, they come in, they drill the holes, and then later on, the sheetrock guy puts a screw in it or the cabinet installer, and nobody knows until, well, how long does that take sometimes? Sometimes if you just barely nick it, it can take, Months. I saw one the other day. It's 30 years old. There was a nail in the pipe for 30 years, and finally rusted. And it finally out. rusted out. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, I remember in the, in the copper that happens sometimes. And these, they seal around it too, but not forever. Sure. Sure. Well, thanks for all of that, and for all the rest of the things you do. It's probably too many to mention. Thank you. But thanks, Seth. Yes, sir. We appreciate working with you.